I was interviewed on my beliefs regarding this movement and their doctrine. I had the original footage on a so-called jump drive. The problem is, it never worked on my computer. And I don't need to keep the entire footage because I'm not an egomaniac. So I just threw it away. Why would I need to keep the entire footage of myself being interviewed? You know, it's so stupid because, well, that's just to make sure nobody misrepresents you, Anthony, or twists what you say. There's always going to be somebody who's going to do something stupid like that to twist what you say. Does that mean that I should be, you know, paranoid about this? No, that's ridiculous. So, in this instance, I can only speak for myself because if I were to review all the areas that the video was incorrect in, it would be a very long video. <laughs> so, I'll just mention the times in the video where I appear and make statements and the possible brief response after my quote in the video. Some will be longer than others. Lastly, I don't have time to refute in depth every error in the video. So I'll give a brief statement with possible scripture references and then reference to a video in the description I previously made to save time. Oh my goodness. Now don't get me wrong, I agree with about 60% of the video exposing the Hebrew Roots movement as a cult and a lot of their beliefs are heretical and not biblical based. It's amazing that they claim to know the truth, but they are just as cultic like every other cult group. In this video series, it's going to be broken up in different videos, each covering a statement I made in the video with the clip included, and then a response. Because I don't want anybody to claim, Oh, he said this in the video. Oh, this means that he's a horrible person because of the one statement I made. This is why I'm making this video. So, just hear me out, shut up, listen to what I have to say, and then search the scripture and come to a conclusion based on God's word. All right? In this film, we will be taking a deeper look into the Hebrew Roots movement. In order to have a clear understanding of their beliefs, we will go face to face with their leaders, teachers, and some of their members to see clearly what they believe. Ultimately, we will see if the beliefs of the Hebrew Roots movement are based on the Holy Scriptures or if they're based on something outside. The Bible itself. Let's begin this first video with this clip, which is the first appearance I made in the video. At nine minutes, exactly. That first is because of the fact that they have a strong argument for it by saying, well, it's in the Ten Commandments. There's a inconsistency among professing Christians. They will protest at courtrooms about taking down the Ten Commandments when they only believe in keeping nine. I'm going to keep all nine, but that one, don't want to. I talked about the inconsistency in professing churchianity of the fact that people will protest taking down the Ten Commandments, but they only believe in keeping nine. Why would you get mad 
on taking down the Ten Commandments when you only believe in keeping nine, and about four of those commandments are nowhere repeated in the New Testament. Did you know that? Especially you, Matt Powell and Stephen Anderson? Probably not. Isn't that a strange thing? But fake professing Christians will demonstrate this hypocrisy and change the subject slightly to make themselves sound intelligent. I'll prove it right now. The number one reason that the Hebrew Roots Movement believes that the Sabbath is for today is because it's part of the Ten Commandments. You see, he completely swerved from the clear double standard that I pointed out, which is fact, by the way, and changed the subject to go to a different direction. You see, that's what people do, brethren, when they see that they can't refute what you're saying or even have the honestly humility to admit that what you said is correct, they will change the subject. Very common but immature elementary school tactic. And then at the 11 minute mark in the video, Stephen Anderson mentions 2 Corinthians 3 verse 7, which says, But if the administration of death, written and engraven in stones, was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses, for the glory of his countenance, which glory was to be done away. Question. How do you know that's referring to the Ten Commandments? He didn't say the Ten Commandments in the passage. Watch my video in the Ten Commandments series on this chapter. Both videos. You'll see the entire truth about what it's really talking about. Yes, there are only Ten Commandments. See these passages here. And yes, they were written on tables of stone. Also see these scriptures. However, <laughs> something that Stephen Airhead Anderson did not tell the audience, the rest of the laws were written on stones too. See these scriptures. Stephen Anderson forgot to mention that, didn't he? So either he's sincerely ignorant, and he's just spouting off hot air on something he doesn't know much about, especially Matt Powell, or He's a willfully ignorant, dumb idiot that is deliberately hiding the evidence from his congregation. No wonder he's been banned from so many countries, according to sources, right? <laughs> Ridiculous. Watch my entire Ten Commandments series if you had the guts. So that's the closing of this first video. You clearly see the double standard that Matt Powell presents here. Nice try, Matty, but you've failed miserably. Stay tuned for the next video.